Another new technology inside Photoshop is its ability to support spherical panoramas that you capture using a 360-degree camera. And the best example of such a thing right now is the Ricoh Theta V. That's a V as opposed to a 5. And to get a sense for what it looks like, I'll go ahead and play this little video here. Notice that it's got a couple of opposing wide-angle cameras. So it's analogous to having a couple of GoPros back to back. Now, you don't really have to spin it around like this. I just want you to get a sense for what the thing looks like. You actually just press a single shutter release, that guy right there, and it takes a picture or a video. It's about the size of a smallish cell phone, by the way, so it's not very big. It captures 4K video as well as 14 megapixel images. And to get a sense for what the videos look like, I'll go ahead and play this guy that I captured out of the sunroof of my car. So we're just driving along here. But notice as I play the video, I can go ahead and spin the image around and look at it from different angles. I can even look upward, by the way, at which point we're going to see a little bit of a seam. And if I like, I can go ahead and move downward into the cabin of the car, at which point you'll see the tripod, but the camera itself does not get captured. Okay, now let's switch over to Photoshop. Now, of course, this video isn't really so much about the Ricoh Theta as it is about Photoshop support for it. So here we are looking at a 14 megapixel still image from the camera. And you can see that it's all warped and stretched out. And so to make better sense of it, what you do is go up to the 3D menu, choose spherical panorama, and then choose import panorama. And then you just want to go ahead and locate the file, in this case, the handheld shot, at which point I'll click the open button. Photoshop will then offer you a size at which to interpret the image. The default size works just fine, so I'll click OK. Now, it may also offer to switch to the 3D workspace. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to click No. And after which, you will see the image. Now, notice we're just seeing a small part of it. To spin it around, go ahead and grab the Move tool, which, of course, you can get by pressing the V key. And now all you need to do is drag inside the image. So right here, we have my oldest son, Max, decked out in his favorite colors these days, red and black. And then at a point, you'll see me holding the camera. Now, the interesting thing about this is that, once again, the camera is invisible, and yet most of my hand is intact. Now, of course, I look pretty ridiculous from this angle, but we've also got Sam crouching behind a rock, and we have the boulder skyline as well, albeit a little bit crooked. Now, things are going to work out better if you use a tripod, and to demonstrate what that looks like, I've got this shot right here. And to wrap it on the inside of a sphere, bear in mind that's what's going on, I'll go up to the 3D menu and once again choose that import panorama command. And this time I'm looking for this guy, the tripod shot. I'll click open, click OK, click no, after which we can make better sense of what's going on inside this photograph. So again, armed with the move tool, you just go ahead and drag. In this case, I'm dragging to the right in order to spin the shot. Because I'm working with the tripod, we now have a level horizon. And then if I drag all the way around, we can see me. Now, what's happening here is that I went ahead and pressed the shutter release, and then I moved my hand quickly away from it, which is why my hand is not such an enormous element of the shot. You also have the option of working with a smartphone app if you prefer. Now, again, what's interesting here is you can drag up in order to see the sky. Notice that we're not seeing any seams whatsoever, even though this is the northern point of the shot. So in other words, this is where the image is converging in all directions. Directions. Meanwhile, if I drag down here, we can see the tripod once again with the camera completely eliminated from the shot. Now, the one problem I have with these particular images is that they exhibit a lot of chromatic aberrations. The good news is you can fix that in Photoshop. And so if you want to edit the original image file, you don't double click on the thumbnail here inside the layers panel. Instead, you double click on the name of the image listed here under the word diffuse, because ultimately this is a 3D diffuse texture. And so if you double click on that file name, you will open the original image, at which point you can go up to the filter menu and choose camera raw filter, and then switch to the lens corrections panel here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here. Notice because there is no camera model information that we're not seeing a chromatic aberration checkbox. So instead what you wanna do is increase this purple amount value and at a value of about 10, those chromatic aberrations disappear. 
Now you also notice if I scroll over here and zoom in a little bit that we have an awful lot of noise on the face of my watch as well as in my shirt. To get rid of that, I'll switch over to the detail panel and I'll crank the luminance amount value up to let's say 50, at which point things become super smooth. If you wanna defeat that a little bit and bring back some of the edges, then you can crank up the amount value. I don't want detail, however, for this shot. So I'll go ahead and crank that value down to zero and then click OK. After which, you can go ahead and close this image and then click the Save button here on the Mac. That would be the Yes button on the PC. And now you can see we've made a big difference. This is the before version of the image with all those chromatic aberrations, and this is the after version, complete with a smoother and sharper me. And that is how you work with spherical panoramas that you capture with a 360-degree camera here inside Photoshop CC.